All right, guys, so the truth is I'm about to leave uh, for a holiday. Uh, my flight is probably nine hours from now, and I don't really have time to do the editing, the normal editing I do when I do top 10 videos, like number 10, number nine. So today I'll be talking about something very interesting. I'll be talking about the top 10 underrated characters in MK Mobile, in my opinion. And when I say characters, I mean every rarity. It can be a bronze character or a or silver or a gold or a diamond, you name it. And there will be no particular order, so I don't aggravate anybody. Without any further ado, we're going to be starting with the very first character, who I believe is criminally underrated. And this character, you can find him uh, by uh, filtering on golds and martial artists. And I'm talking about Nunjitsu Scorpion. Now, Nunjitsu Scorpion is super underrated character. The thing is, though, he is exceptionally useful for many things. Of course, his passive works at any fusion. So if, if, even if you have him fusion zero, you can, for instance, have him support your classic Lucane or other Scorpion who is a martial artist and 30% attack boost is insanely good. On top of everything, this guy can do special one loop. If you have the correct items, he can do special one without any issue. So he, you can basically keep the enemy stun loop and he can even do special two loop. So definitely this character is super underrated. For one thing, he has very useful passive that you can use all the way from uh, day one to let's say day 3000, it doesn't matter, it can work in a lot of situations. And on top of everything, he has the utility by virtue of his special one spam and special two spam. So 100% of Jesus Scorpion is one of the most underrated characters in the game. The second character that I wanna mention is the things are getting a little bit interesting here. If you have been following my channel, probably you know by one that I've been using this guy all the time. It doesn't matter that my account is almost maxed out, I keep using this guy because he's super powerful. His passive is exceptionally busted. 30% critical hit chance for all martial artist teammates. And the thing is, even if he dies, the passive stays the same. So in other words, the passive stays active. And 30% critical hit chance is huge. Now let's put this into perspective. For instance, let's uh, see other martial artists give a critical hit chance. Let's take a look at Boraicho. Boraicho, guys, gives 25. Look at this, plus 25 critical hit chance for all martial artists. Let's review another guy who gives critical hit chance boost, and uh, this guy should be a nether realm. I'm talking about, of course, the one and only, the one and only Shinnok. Shinnok, guys, gives 20. So we have two gold characters that gives 20 and 25, and we have a silver character that gives 30. It is true that he doesn't do anything else, but at the end of the day, if you have strong account, why would you ever use Shinnok? Like, you would only use him for the 25 or 20% 20 critical hit chance. If you have strong account, why would you use Boraicho? You only need him so that he gives you a 25% critical hit chance. But there is one silver character that does the job better. So in a way, you almost never use Silver Kunjin in the beginning of your MK Mobile journey because you need three strong characters. But the more your account gets stronger, the more useful Silver Kunjin gets. That is the reason why he ends up in my top 10 most underrated characters in MK Mobile. The third one, guys, the third one I want to talk about is another Nether Realm character. I believe this guy is criminally underrated. I'm talking about Ant Man, or in other words, Cold Scorpion. This guy has excellent special one. In fact, in Cold War team, he's probably the best special one chainer in the game. He has very good power generation and he can keep your, uh, his enemies in stun loop forever without any issues whatsoever. But this is not everything about this character. He has super good special one and incredible special too. Now, he cannot really chain it on whatever, but at the end of the day, he sets the entire enemy team on fire and he gets himself a shield. On top of everything, he has immunity to fire. And this is super useful in so many situations. For instance, you're doing crypt, you're doing survival mode, and you're facing those annoying MK11 Scorpion teams that slowly drain your health. But if you have Cold Scorpion, that's not a problem because <laughs> he as uh, mk11 scorpion passive cannot do anything so fires cannot do anything for you so the immunity to fire thing is exceptional but this is only the tip of the iceberg because once again we're talking about a character who has one of the very best special ones in the game in terms that he can chain it to perfection and super useful special tool and i don't understand why many people underestimate this guy probably the reason why he's not used that often is because he's nether realm which which basically makes him difficult to support in the most cases 
Now, the next character who, in my opinion, is underrated, and I mean that he is underrated, uh, is Fire God Lucane. Now, don't get me wrong, Fire God Lucane isn't the best character in the game. I wouldn't even place him in top 5, I wouldn't place him in top 10. However, a lot of people are saying that he's trash, but <laughs> at the end of the day, he isn't. If you learn his basic attacks, he has close to interruptible special attack, a basic attack chaining, it's incredible. So his basic attacks are slow, but once you get uh, the idea how you can use them, they become super useful. On top of everything, you can basically use this guy as a very powerful support. 25% basic attack and blockable chance is always useful. And the thing is, look at this, their special attacks, the Elder Gods, have 50% chance of being assisted by Lucane Fireball that applies Fire Dot. So you can use that on the Joker, you can use that on the Classic Raiden, on Injustice Raiden, you name it. So at the end of the day, this guy is super useful at low fusion because he can provide the supportive value. Once again, it's not one of the best, but it is super good in certain situations, can help you. On top of everything, as a fighter, he is super good. And if you have him high fusion, he is going to be exceptionally good for survival mode or crypt places where you need to recover your health due to his passive. Every single time when he set on fire or he set the enemies on fire, he gains health and he becomes more powerful. So why people consider him trash? I don't know. To be honest, I would put him like an A tier or something, but definitely he's not an S. This doesn't mean though that he's trash. Let's continue with the next character, which in my opinion is criminally underrated. And this character is one of the newest characters that have been introduced to the game. Now, a lot of people are saying that Daniel Blakitana is trash or anything. In my opinion, she is one of the very best goats in the game. She's a total S. Now, she's not perfect. I really hate the fact that her special 2 isn't unblockable, which, I mean, it should be unblockable after all. I hope they're going to fix it because I can swear in the beginning her special 2 was unblockable. But at the end of the day, this girl is incredible. Look at this. Just look at this. This girl has 120% base power generation which is incredible for a gold in fact i believe that's the highest for a gold ever 120 base power generation on top of everything if she is max fusion uh, with her shield and her friendship equipment she's close to unkillable the only thing that you need to do is to make sure that she, uh, that she can generate power fast enough and once you do that she's unkillable and her synergy with sindo any sindo is just busted so definitely adenia blood kitana is one of the most underrated new characters in the game I can accept the fact that many people don't like her because they only get a fusion of her and at fusion zero she cannot really do much but generally speaking in my opinion she is one of the very best goats in the game and she should be regarded with respect now the next character in here that is super underrated let's go right here and um filter on classics the next character is classic noob cybot I was one of the people who were saying that he's not really that great. I was wrong. I admit that 100%. In my opinion, Classic Noob is super good. With the perfect, with the good equipment, I don't want to say the perfect equipment, with the good equipment, he can change special one more or less forever. And his special two, once you get a hold of it, is exceptionally useful. Uh, so once again, he has a very good special one, very good special two. His drawback is the fact that his stats are not really that great. But let's be real. We shouldn't be hypocrites, guys. Classic Scorpion has bad stats, but nobody's saying that he's bad because of the bad stats. Now, the bad stats drag him down a little bit, but you cannot say that the character is trash only because he has bad stats. Now, am I saying that Classic Scorpion is worse or the equal level to Classic Noob Cybot? No, Classic Scorpion is a better character, but this doesn't mean that Classic Noob doesn't have value. In my opinion, once again, one of the most underrated characters in the game. If you don't if you haven't tried him yet, rectify this mistake immediately. <sighs> okay, I'll be talking about another classic character. And I was wrong about this guy. I am the first person to admit that I was wrong about Classic Kano. Classic Kano is super underrated. He is by far, as long as they, they don't have resistance to stun, he can clear any fight at any fusion. This is how great he is. Uh, again, super low stats, unfortunately, and he's heavily reliant on that stun. Once the stun isn't there, he cannot apply the stun he cannot do anything and that's the biggest downfall of classic Kano. this is the reason why i wouldn't place him at not, let's say tier s but definitely i was one of the people who were saying that he's like a mid card or something i was wrong in my opinion he's one of the best goats not one of the very very best goats he doesn't rank as high as uh, combat cup johnny or lizard barack or classic scorpion but he's right next to them in the next year like so all you need to do is to make sure that you can stun, and if the enemy can't resist the stun, then Classic Kano can clear more or less any fight. This is how great he is. 
Now let's continue with the other, the other character that I believe is criminally underrated, and this time we're not talking about classic characters, this time we're talking about basic gold characters. And um, I was extremely, extremely surprised the first time when I played this guy really, really hard. We're talking about some double Johnny Cage. This guy doesn't do a lot of damage, let's be real. His stats are horrible and his damage output isn't really amazing. However, if you give him the correct items, he have enough power generation so he can start chaining his special one. He has one of the very best special one chainings in the game. And his passive is super, super simple. Look at this. Stun double attacks on target and stunning the opponent. That's it. But it can add so much value in so many situations. So generally, if you have stun double Johnny Cage and you have never used him or you just used him once or twice, consider using him again so that you can master him. Let's go it that way because Criminally underrated character. Seriously, criminally underrated. It doesn't matter that he has low stats, one of the very best fighters in the game. All right, so the next underrated character, guys, is MK11 Sindel. All right, MK11 Sindel. Uh, you know, the first time when I tried this character, I was like, yeah, she is just okay, but not special. However, I created two beginner accounts, starting from scratch, and on every single one of those I dropped MK11 Sindel, and I couldn't really be happier, because she's one of the very best supports for two of the very best characters in the game. She can support, apparently, MK11 Scorpion, however, she can also support classic Scorpion. So, in a way, definitely Sindel adds tremendous value to your account at Fusion Zero. She isn't really the best fighter, even though she can stall. So she tags in, then you do special one, then you stun, then you tag her back uh, to safety. So she has the ability to survive, let's call it that way, as long as she has her passive and the stuns. Uh, but at the same time, she adds super, super good value, more or less uh, your entire team. And when I say the entire team, I mean a really good character, just classic Scorpion and um, MK11 Scorpion. And I'm not only talking about uh, the blockable chance, but look at this, 25% chance to resist stun. How awesome is that? For instance, you're facing classic, uh, sorry, Circle of Shadow team with Circle of Shadow Lucan, you want to resist stun, you're a beginner, you don't really have a lot of uh, gears to do so, or even if you do, you don't want to give your main guy tons of useless stun resistance gear, you want to give him something to boost the damages, in a way. MK11 Sindel is the girl that's going to save you. So, 100% super underrated card. And the last card that I want to talk about, guys, the last card is this one, Lizard Jade. Lizard Jade is the more powerful version of Heavy Weapons Jax. She is tremendous, she is great, she is fabulous. She has exceptionally good special 2, super powerful special 1, and on top of that her passive is awesome. Not only she's great in the Lizard team, which is where she has to be, even though I can make the argument that she can be super useful even outside of the Lizard team, but what makes her super good is a team thrill effect. Basically, she has the power to reduce the power generation of the enemy team by 50%, and that's crazy. If you haven't tried her yet with Injustice Raiden, do rectify this mistake immediately, because Lizard Jade, in my opinion, is the best support for Injustice Raiden in the game because Injustice Raiden applies the power uh, drain every second, and by doing that, he gets a stack of the Team Trio that stays there more or less forever. Uh, so in a way, he can keep easily the five stacks on his opponent throughout the entire length of the game, which means that his opponent will always have 50% reduced power generation. So let's summarize. MK, sorry, Lizard Jade. Super useful special one, super useful special two that can deal massive damage to the opponent team, and she is very useful support, even though you can argue that outside of the Lizard team she is situational support, but when it comes to Injustice Raiden, she is just godlike, and a lot of people are sleeping on that. Alright guys, so I hope you found this video useful, once again I'll be absent for about 5 or 6 days, and yeah, when I come back I'm going to be releasing a lot of videos for you. We'll be going through the items of the Black Dragon Tower, and I'll be finding pretty good strategies to use them. See you next time guys, take care. Perfect.